always want oh, to no, thank you. Mm-hmm. 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 I, did, I didn't look. I didn't look. You good? Because these are the ones. No. Oh, I, well, that's fine. I only know about the special ones, so hoping for better news there. You, you can do whatever you want. All right. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Roll call, City Clerk. Morris. Here. Larson. Here. Smith. Here. Perkins. Here. McAdams. Here. Verbeck. Here. Favor. Here. Mayor Barnes. Here. And myself. Here. All right. Uh, if we all could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And Ernell Brown, how about you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, all All right, moving on to agenda item C, approval of the agenda. I take a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Verbeck, seconded by Alderman Favor. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. All right. Agenda is approved. Item number D, or item uh, D, we do have some speed request forms that were submitted, but they're for agenda item L4. So don't let me, sometimes as I get rolling, if I forget, just be like, hey, Mayor. Um, and I'll make sure to get uh, you guys up there during that time. So outside of uh, agenda item L4, we have no public uh, participation or presentations. Uh, moving to agenda item F, appointments, we have none. And then moving to agenda item G, consent agenda. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to remove uh, item three, the minutes of special city council meeting of September 1st, 2021. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, discussion. So on that, I assume, because uh, you were marked as yes. being absent, but you were present during that meeting? They okay. need to be corrected. All right. So we need to make those modifications and bring those back to another date, a uh, future date, City Clerk Cohen. Um, so we have a motion and a second. So it was motion by Alderman McAdams, seconded by Alderman Smith to pull the minutes of the special city council meeting of September 1st, 2021 from the agenda, or from the consent agenda. Any dis- other discussion on that? Hearing none, uh, roll call. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. All right, then I'll need a motion to pass the remaining items in the consent agenda, which are the minutes of the regular city council meeting of June 28, 2021 minutes of the regular city council meeting of June, July 12th, 2021, and accounts payable and payroll through September 13th, 2021 in the amount of $3,333,145.29. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman McAdams, seconded by Alderman Perkins. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. All right. Agenda has been approved. So moving on to agenda item H, public hearings. We have none of those as well, which gets us into considerations. Consideration number one, consideration of the 2020 census impact of the city ward map. Uh, Yeah, I I need a motion to bring that to the floor. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderwoman Morris, seconded by Alderman Favor, uh, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. As uh, the background reports uh, to you and to the general public, the state of Illinois requires that the city uh, have political wards that are essentially equal, not uh, exactly equal, but uh, in a representative way equal in population. And uh, our 2020 census results are in, as you all know, 
Uh, our current population is at 40,290, and there was a loss of about 3,805 3, persons from 2010. So, uh, as you can see by the chart on your page two in your background, uh, most of the population was lost in Ward 6, uh, but it, there was some population loss in others as well. So uh, it's incumbent upon us to try to aim for population across each of the seven wards uh, that would average about, in this case, 5,756, take the seven into the uh, 40,290, that's what you get. Uh, of course, the challenge here is not to run the lines through uh, a living room or uh, down a duplex common line or any of those things, and also to recognize that we can't be perfect in this and that uh, we, we are going to do our very best to have approximate equality in the population in these wards. So what's proposed, and there's also a mapping exhibit that's at your desk tonight, is in the table at the bottom of page two, a uh, redistricted uh, number for each of the wards. Uh, I've got the actual number and then a redistricted number show, showing what the difference is and then the difference from that um, uh, 5,756, which is a little bit elusive in terms of the math. Um, you have a couple exhibits in uh, this one, I, I suppose, is the, uh, well, there's the official ward map, and, oops, going the wrong way, sorry. Uh, if you have any specific questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer them, or, or at your pleasure. Alder persons, any questions for city manager? Oh, Mayor. Oh, Alderman Burbitt, sorry. Is this something that only happens every 10 years? Let's say there's a dramatic growth, there's annexation, significant growth in five years, and do we look at or do we need to look at a shift in that during these next 10 years? If, um, if there was a dramatic change, something uh, un unforeseen happened, the council could do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, there are some additional steps you go through. Typically, it's done uh, with the census sure. every 10 years. Yeah. By law, you have to do it every 10 years uh, within a certain period of time after the, the census. But we can do it if there is that growth. In it. There, yes, you're not locked into it okay. right now and there's Thank there you. certain conditions. Some, some communities, we haven't had this in, in our community in a long time. Uh, that experience uh, dramatic housing growth, uh, as many communities across the country did in the early 2000s. I might have considered something like that. Also, if we feel that the census doesn't capture the true numbers as, as we think uh, we, we may have, we can, uh, the council, I can bring a, forward a, a proposition to the council which identifies what the cost of a special census might be, and that can be done too. And to that point, I met with the uh, mayor of Naperville uh, this week, and they're going to be doing something similar because there's a, a project that is under development now mm -hmm. that will be coming on the rolls in the next year. Um, so they're going to do a special census to be able to uh, acquire those numbers earlier on. Great. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? No horse trading, no, you know, <laughs> going out back or... <laughs> <laughs> yes, City Manager. Uh, if the council consensus is that this is reasonably fair, then we can bring this back in ordinance form and action. Yeah, and in all seriousness, I mean, some of you have you know, established relationships in your ward with whether residents or businesses, and if you really felt strongly about wanting to maintain those, this is the time to express that. Otherwise, we'll just move forward. Yes, Alderman Morris. No, I'll just note that um, this looks great. It looks, uh, you know, some of the shifts that have been done um, for the first ward look like they uh, deliberately acknowledge some of the more natural ways that the roads flow over there. And so, for example, there was a, you know, I remember there was a fire that felt like it was in my ward, but it wasn't in my ward. It was just across the street. Uh, and this, you know, puts that 
in the ward and it, it just it's more logical this way for sure so thank you thank you I want to thank uh, Doug Eaton our, who was our, our planning technician and uh, GIS specialist for doing a lot of the detail work on this okay all right hearing no other discussion um, Yeah, so you don't need roll call on that, right? This no, is just, uh, yeah, the recommendation consideration. Back. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, moving on to agenda item J, resolutions. So resolution number one, resolution 2021-080, repealing resolution 2021-075, and authorizing an agreement with the DeKalb Corn Classic and Kishwaukee Sunrise Rotary Club for the 2021 DeKalb Corn Fest 5K, 10K, and Taste the DeKalb events on September 26, 2021. Can I have a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Verbeck, seconded by Alderman Smith. Um, yeah, in a nutshell, this is just because of my participation and involvement with the Corn Classic. We just needed to readjust this so I can recuse myself from the vote. So if there's no discussion, yes, ma'am. I have a question, just since we are perfecting how we're doing this one. Um, I am a member of the Sunrise Rotary Club. Should I also recuse myself? Yes. Okay. Then I, too, will. All right. <laughs> with no other with no other discussion uh, roll call Larson yes Smith yes Perkins yes McAdams yes Verbeck yes favor yes and Mayor Barnes and Alder Woman Morris you have recused yourselves yeah, I, have a, I actually have a point of clarification for Carolyn I assume that you were an officer in the Sunrise Club you're not an officer. Okay. If you're not an officer, you don't have to recuse yourself. Okay. That's the you could vote I, if you wanted to. I just wanted to figure yeah, I should no, ask I'm, and I'm make no. sure. I, I made a I made a bad yeah. assumption. I should have clarified that. Yeah. Thank Sorry. you. Yeah. In case Alder Woman Morris. Yes. Seven eyes, zero nays, one recusal. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. All right. Resolution passes. Moving on to resolution number two, resolution 2021-081, authorizing a payment to the DeKalb County Community Foundation on behalf of the DeKalb Municipal Ban for services beginning January 1st, 2021 through the December 31st, 2021 in the amount of 41088 Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Smith, seconded by Alderman Favor, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. This comes to you for several reasons. One is that uh, the $41,088 that had been budgeted is beyond my spending authority. I'll bring it to you for official authorization, although it's in the budget, uh, it's part of a contractual arrangement. And the other piece is that uh, I, I know the council over the years has been urging the band and its uh, executive director to establish uh, its uh, 501c3. Apparently that's, that's a problem legally because of its relationship with the city and, and, and I don't presume to know all the details but the state has been reluctant to do that but the best way for them to establish a path for private fundraising as an alternative was to go and create a pass-through fund with the uh, DeKalb County Community Foundation and that's what they've done and uh, the director there is agreeable to this and they have a contract with them and so by allowing for this payment to make, be made to the community foundation. It goes through the pass-through fund, eventually gets to the band so they can reimburse their uh, musicians and the other expenses that we pay for every year. But it also sets up a, a pathway for private donations. I thought this is the only middle ground that I could conceive of, so I recommend your approval. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. Resolution passes. All right, uh, number three, resolution 2021-082, authorizing the purchase of one single axle utility vehicle through Rush Truck Center in the amount, in an amount not to exceed $204,000.34. $204,035. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Favor, seconded by Alderman Perkins. 
City Manager. Uh, this is a, a key vehicle uh, in the, the uh, city uh, departments. This is known as the war wagon. This is what rolls out for middle of the night uh, water main repairs and more routine repairs of a variety of uh, uh, types uh, during the day. Uh, it's an expensive vehicle because it carries an array of, of uh, uh, compressors and pumps and, and light towers and, and other things that are needed uh, as the excavations uh, will demand. Uh, this is paid for out of the water capital fund. Uh, we found, uh, I should say uh, Brian Faber found, uh, a, a way to get at uh, a, a more uh, economical price for such a special outfitted vehicle which would not be available through the Illinois State Purchase System. And uh, I, I appreciate uh, his investigation, and we found a local truck dealer that would basically provide the chassis, and then we'd have to have somebody build the, the box and, and, and outfit it and so forth. But we feel this is a big price, but uh, it, it's, it's a big <coughs> truck, and it's, it's uh, the other one we had for 18 years. This one hopefully will last that long. It's used every day. Discussion? This is Mike Taylor's crew, right? It is. Yeah, boy, watching them out in yeah. 30 below, mm -hmm. doing their thing. They need, they definitely need the right equipment. All right, uh, hearing no other discussion, roll call. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. Resolution passes. Moving on to number four, resolution 2021-083, authorizing the award of a construction services contract to Curran con Contracting Company in the amount of $1,736,419.37 for Illinois Route 23 and Gurley Road improvements, with staff authority to approve change orders up to a combined project total not to exceed $1,866,650. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman McAdams, uh, seconded by Alderwoman Morris. City Manager. Well, thank you, Mayor. As the council is aware, we've been pursuing this since the late spring of 2020. Uh, we didn't have the, the funds to uh, contribute a, a major uh, a part of the funding from public services. We were very pleased to with uh, Zach Gill, our, our city engineer's help, to uh, apply for and receive a grant from the Illinois Department of Transportation through their economic development program. But then COVID hit and it took a while, quite a while, the better part of a year to have that, those funds released. They were released fairly recently. We went out to bid as soon as we could and we had two, uh, for the time of the year, pretty competitive bidders. We're trying to get this done this year, at least to get a a uh, temporary signal up, even if it's strung across the intersection uh, for the winter, and uh, we can still make that. Uh, uh, there's time is of the essence. We we hope you will support this uh, uh, low bid from current contracting of one million seven hundred thirty-six thousand four hundred nineteen dollars. Uh, we've also uh, asked for your permission. Uh, we don't need to spend this if we don't if the occasion doesn't arise, but uh, have a a contingency that can cover so we can keep going on this uh, just about any foreseen unforeseen thing that might occur whether it's bad soils uh, we've already done a pretty ex exhaustive utility search in this area but there may be something it's a very old intersection very old area and uh, uh, at the next regular meeting just to give you a tip uh, we'll, we'll have the the engineering uh, construction um, uh, inspection contract much less than this for you. So uh, we recommend your approval. <clears throat> Questions, Council? Hearing none, roll call. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. Thank you. All right, resolution passes. 
Moving on to item number five, resolution 2021-084, authorizing an agreement with Ferrara Candy Company for their role in economic development program responsibilities. Can I have a motion? Second. Moved by Alderman Favor, seconded by Alderman McAdams. Uh, city Manager. So this item and the next item are related to the item you just took action on. Uh, this one in particular is an agreement with the Ferrara Candy Company. They have agreed to pay the difference between the current contracting price and the state uh, grant of $1.49 million. And uh, we need to uh, formalize that in the form of an agreement with the corporation. And that's what this is about. We recommend your approval. Council, discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. Resolution passes. All right, agenda item six here, resolution 2021-085, authorizing an intergovernmental agreement with DeKalb Township Road District regarding the design, construction, ownership, and maintenance of Gurler Road at the intersection of Illinois Route 23. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Verbeck, seconded by Alderman Favor, city manager. Uh, this resolution is similar to others that we've done when uh, there has been uh, uh, basically an overlap of jurisdiction and some parts of this intersection work will uh, be occurring in the, in, uh, in the way of or, or on some of the property, particularly during the construction phase of that is within the uh, DeKalb Township Road District's jurisdiction and uh, as a matter of good faith, what we typically do uh, is enter a agreement uh, we promise to do good work and ensure the good work is done and also would indemnify the township in case there's gouging or other problems with uh, any of the paved area leading up to this. It's within the township's jurisdiction. <coughs> so recommend your approval. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. Resolution passes. All right, moving on to agenda item K, ordinances, second reading. We have none tonight. So that moves us on uh, agenda item L, ordinances, first reading. So number one, ordinance 2021-037, amending the fiscal year end December 31st, 2021 budget as it pertains to the American Rescue Plan Fund, Fund 110. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Excellent. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, probably wondering, too, has Nicholas brought back another amendment? What's the matter here? Uh, well, there have been a lot of changes occurring uh, from a fiscal standpoint this year, and, and generally speaking, for the good. Uh, as you well know, we've committed uh, $1,185,000 for the acquisition of Hunter Hillcrest. Uh, when we set up our uh, American Recovery Plan Fund, Fund 110, three or four meetings ago, uh, we at that point hadn't received the appraisal and hadn't proceeded yet to commit to, to uh, purchase the building. And now that we know the number, we were off a little bit, so I thought we'd tidy that up because uh, we're, we're going to be making monthly reports, as you know, and we want to make sure that the money is very precisely accounted for. So uh, at this point, we're not sure what the developmental services cost might be by the end of the year. I thought it was reasonable to, to basically uh, put a, an offsetting amount of money back into the land acquisition part and reduce that by about 200000 We still have a, a balance of about $440,000. So we, we have money for other things that we may need to do. And I recommend your approval of this. It's basically a zero. Discussion, Council? All right, hearing none, roll call. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Smith. 
Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. Would you want us to bring a motion to waive second reading? Or? Please, our uh, okay. council payable clerk would be very happy if you did. You got it. So I would take a motion to waive second reading? I moved. Uh, so moved. Second. Moved by Alderwoman Morris, seconded by Alderwoman Larson. Uh, Point of information, Mayor? Yes. Who moved and seconded the, the first reading? Alderman Favor. Alderman Favor moved, seconded. I did. Alderman, Alderman McAdams. McAdams. Thank you. Okay, so discussion on that? Hearing none, roll call. Morris. Yeah. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. Second reading is approved. All right. Uh, moving on to agenda item L2. Ordinance 2021-038, authorizing a zoning map amendment from the SFR2 single family residential district to the PD-R plan development residential district and an amendment to ordinance 2018-068 for the property located at 1221 Sycamore Road Adventure Works. Can I have a motion? So I'll move. Second. Moved by Alderman Smith, seconded by Alderwoman Morris, city manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think we're all proud of what uh, VentureWorks has been able to accomplish in recent years. And uh, this item is before you because of their fairly recent acquisition of, of the lot next door to them. And they're trying to incorporate it with the same spirit and the same uh, appearance uh, that they've uh, been able to transform a single family house and a pretty large lot into the service uh, center that they've created. Uh, I'm happy to say in our audience tonight, exec the new executive director, Katie Watts, is here. You want to stand up and take a bow? <laughs> <laughs> Evening. And, and she's here to answer any questions you may have. But I, I think this is pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, Dan Olson brought their request uh, to uh, amend uh, the, the ordinance that was done back in 2018 when they were starting to do some of the build out and shape up. And uh, at that time, uh, there was a, a, a second level uh, apartment, I believe, that's since gone out of use and they don't want to put it into use. This building that they have has been converted entirely to, uh, to counseling. And, and so this amends that ordinance and, and restricts the uses to the, the uses you see currently on the site. There are a couple other things that it does, uh, and Dan took this to the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, about a week ago. Uh, it, it requires the, the uh, property's appearance and character remain substantially consistent. And uh, uh, finally, they have less than two acres there. Uh, our UDO, our Unified Development Ordinance, generally requires two acres or more uh, to uh, have uh, a uh, planned development. But this is certainly a planned development. It's been <laughs> more planned than any less than two acres in town, I think. And it's uh, all good. So uh, there's a waiver for that, too. The Planning and Zoning Commission didn't have any trouble with any of these three uh, propositions and uh, by unanimous vote of five to zero recommended your approval and we do too. Discussion council? Okay, hearing none, roll call. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. <clears throat> Verbeck. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. Ordinance passes on first reading. Do you want us to waive second reading? Motion to waive second reading and approve. Second. Thank you. So moved by Alderman Verbeck, seconded by Alderman Smith. Discussion? Roll call. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. All right, the ordinance passed on second <laughs> reading. So I also always extend, there is no reason for you to continue to stay. If you have a busy night ahead of you, you can definitely get up and leave. We won't take any offense to that whatsoever now that your agenda item is completed. You betcha. All right, moving on to item three, ordinance 2021-039, improving the preliminary and final plat of subdivision for CST subdivision along Harvestor Drive, CST Industries Incorporated. Can I have a motion? Second. Moved by Alderman Favors, seconded by Alderman Perkins, city manager. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we're also very proud of CST Industries. It's been uh, in place on uh, south of South Forth and Harvest Road Drive for a long time. Uh, it's uh, a part of uh, a development that was conceived many, many years ago. There's some land that was never built out or developed. Uh, it's, it's beyond uh, the need of this business. Uh, and uh, it's about uh, 13, a little bit over 13 acres. There has been interest from time to time from from others to purchase part of it or some of it, and they want to uh, create some natural lot lines that make some sense. Should there be interest again, and, and they see fit to uh, part with some part of this area, and so what's before you is uh, a three lot subdivision. Uh, the smallest piece of that is going to be a stormwater detention pond to more rationally control and release the rainwater that uh, they, they now have a pretty good idea where it wants to go. Uh, and uh, there's, then there's a smaller lot and a bigger lot. Uh, these uh, also provide ingress and egress easements as appropriate so there aren't any spike strips and, and the like. Uh, and there's, uh, we're planning over a, a private drive which allows access to the remainder of the CST property. So. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed this and uh, uh, supported it by a vote of five to zero, and we recommend your support of their recommendation. Discussion? I should mention one, yes. one other thing, and Go they ahead. have likewise formally, as uh, the UDO uh, suggests, uh, requested, uh, if you approve on first reading, if you would approve on second reading. All right, any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. All right, ordinance passes on first reading. Can I have a motion to pass on second reading? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderwoman Morris, uh, seconded by Alderman Favor. Discussion? Roll call, please. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes. Eight ayes, zero nays. Ordinance passes on second reading. All right, I have a procedural item. So when public wants to comment on an item, do we have to bring it before the floor first or? Yeah, it should be Okay. Fine. All right, so moving on to agenda item L4, ordinance 2021-040, amending the city of DeKalb municipal code by adding a new chapter 46, citizens police review board. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman McAdams, seconded by Alderman Verbeck. All right, then we'll move on to uh, our speaker request forms. We have two speakers tonight. First, um, we have Sasha Cohen. Sasha, you'll have to come to the podium. He'll be coming up as an individual resident Absolutely. speaking on behalf of this. Council, I, I read the proposed ordinance, and you know I think it's incredibly important that we have a a review board that's outside of the of the chain of command. As we've seen in, in many instances nationwide, this concept of self-investigation has failed over and over again. And so I commend you for instituting or hopefully instituting a, um, a system in which there will be some form of external review of complaints. I do, however, have um, two primary concerns, the first being that the, the board will only be empowered to make recommendations which have to filter through the chief of police for, uh, for any action. This makes them effectively toothless. You know, we can, we can hem and haw about how much we trust individual people in the process or like our current chief, but that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, a board that has to have all of their um, recommendations approved by one individual can be stopped from doing anything. And the second concern that I have is about the requirement that they only uh, open investigations into things where the citizen is willing to 
come forward and publicly attach their name with no mechanism for private discussion. I wonder how in a situation where, God forbid, an officer were to say sexually assault somebody in our community, he would feel about having imposed the requirement that if she reports that to this external agency, she'll be forced to speak openly during public meeting about what happened without any ability for the board to consider the sensitive and private nature of that complaint or of any other complaints. I would urge you to take another look through this ordinance and see if there's a mechanism that can be put in place to protect the privacy of people who feel they've been victimized because that's the first step in making sure they feel comfortable coming forward. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, next up we have Ernell Brown. Ernell? So real quick, um, this ordinance for the Citizen Review Board, again, like you said, is, it is very important to have. The toothless part, I do agree there was some discussion related to um, decision-making authority and things like that in conversation. And I do believe the proposed um, mechanism of a joint decision where that decision is made in conjunction with the Review Board and the Chief of Police would suffice because the decision cannot be made unilaterally by just the chief without consideration or input from that review board. Now, if in fact it is the way um, Sasha spoke on related to it being um, a decision that he makes after recommendation, then no, definitely couldn't agree with that because it would be toothless. Uh, point two, public, no quarrel. So my, my major part of this is the purpose of it, and that's building community trust and giving the community a mechanism whereby they can actually be involved in the process of discipline, understanding policy change, and rebuilding the trust between police and community. I think overall that's the most important point, um, and I do, again, believe that if it's toothless, it would be meaning there's no point in doing it. If the, the authority and ability of the review board is subject to a single authority or a secondary authority that can roll with the first plan, then there isn't any point. From the community, I've, I've been discussing this thing uh, with quite a few community members, some we like and some we don't. And everybody's sense of this is that it's a good thing and it's going in the right direction. So again, let's not ruin it by making it a, a, a puppet show. If it's gonna be a puppet show, we can just leave it on the, on the table and throw it back in the water, whatever we're gonna do with it. Um, last thing on this is, I think it goes hand in hand with crime redu reduction. If you have officers that behave and community members that come around and behave and, work, and everybody's working together, that does reduce crime, like some of the things we've been, been doing recently. The last part of this is the two worlds analogy. Working with police and community is dangerous on both sides because of the trust factor between the two as well as the trust among the two in their own circles. So it's very important that anything we consider related to this ordinance or anything else for community police relations is taken very serious. Because there's people out in this community that walk among the very element that we, so many people, don't want in our community and advocate for these things. And in that advocating, you get a lot of slack in the sense of, are you the police or this, that, and the other. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. So walking two worlds, a world that you're leaving behind and the world you've been welcomed into trying to bridge the gap, it's not easy. We all got to do our part. So. Again, if we're going to do it toothless and, and, and the board cannot independently speak on or raise any issues, um, there's no point because now you just put people in danger because now that same person or people have to go back to the community and explain how this decision went that way. If we worried about the crowds of 200 people, imagine 200 angry people that just heard somebody got choked, stomped, beat, or whatever, but God forbid, not, I doubt that it'll happen. Um, well, I'm hopeful that it won't happen. Um, 
But imagine that person that's advocating in the community for the decisions that are being made in this room and how it affects that community and in that community um, to get feedback here. You're automatically viewed with distrust, so it's a tedious balance. I mean, a, a, a real balance. So if, if we could, please, let's take serious this and every other effort that connects to it to build that relationship and trust between the police and community. Thank you, Arnold. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> so this item was brought to you uh, on August 9th, and that followed uh, a couple months of, of uh, a lot of back and forth with local community groups, some formal, some not. Uh, also, uh, there was an August 3rd, a review of the proposal that came to you on August 9th by the Human Relations Commission, as I reported at that time on August 9th and, and in my background tonight. Uh, the, the commission had, uh, the commission consensus was in support of what had been presented to you uh, and with a, an urge to uh, open the vetting process, uh, the, the selection of the members as widely as possible. Uh, <clears throat> since the Council's direction to bring back something in ordinance form, there's been more discussion. The discussion hasn't ended, uh, including some people who've been here in, in the uh, audience tonight. And uh, with further discussion with the police chief and the chief's discussion uh, internally within the department, we thought it was appropriate to address what has been uh, one of the things that was pointed out tonight, and that is the, the uh, the effectiveness of the board and how it could be more effective if it would have an opportunity to make a recommendation to the chief before the chief had rendered a decision in discipline matter or in a review of a complaint. So that is written into the ordinance that's before you tonight. That is a change and I wanted to highlight that. Uh, the other change is that this is all within the uh, public uh, public's eye. Uh, there was a possibility in the last, in, in the draft concept that was before you that maybe if it was something that was touching on what might be considered to be confidential information in, in other types of personnel actions that the board uh, would have to take this up in executive session. That's no longer the case. It comes to the public in public meetings. Uh, the records and results of the deliberations of the board will, will be public and will remain public according to what the state law is about the retention of records and so forth. So uh, requires the chief of police to consult with the board and provides for a, a public hearing of all citizen complaints. Uh, there is one point that is identified in this, which is that uh, persons bringing complaints in public to the board uh, shall identify themselves. Uh, I want to make it very clear that uh, there are other routes that people can take. Uh, they can go directly to the chief anytime. They can also go to the Human Relations Commission uh, in an anonymous fashion. Uh, but in that, this is now a, a, a what, what's proposed here is a board that would have an informal hearing uh, where an officer might even also appear before the board. And um, we thought it was appropriate, just as it would be in a court of law for a person to identify themselves and explain that their, their information, to the best of their ability, is not false, but true and, and, and uh, relevant to the, to the charge uh, being levied. So, uh, and the Human Relations Commission thought that was appropriate. Bring it to you in, in the form that you see it in your background. We've recommended that you review this tonight on one reading, so we can hold it over in case there are other people who haven't had a chance to review this, and we can bring it back to you if you think it's in order at, at, in the current stage uh, at one of the next meetings. Council, Alderwoman Morris. Um, the comments tonight uh, by the public were really valuable, I think. Um, really important notes. I have been, you know, in communication with some of the groups who've been working on this who had expressed their satisfaction with some of the changes that had been made. However, I think that the primary problem that remains is exactly what um, our two speakers brought up, that 
it appears that this uh, board, the Citizens Review Board, has no no real recourse in the event of a disagreement. Do I understand that correctly? In the event that the uh, Citizens Review Board perceives things to be one way and the chief perceives them to be another way. It's an advisory body, much right. like the Plan Commission is and the Human Relations Commission is and so forth. It doesn't have a role which is more uh, of a decision-making role, much like the council, because it's not a representative body. It's appointed by the mayor. It, it has a different mm -hmm. uh, fiduciary responsibility. It has no fiduciary responsibility. Yeah, so I mean that makes, you know, initially that makes perfect sense, right? Like it makes perfect sense that all of our, um, all of the bodies, all of the commissions that are appointed by the mayor, um, if they were given the power to, to say fire the police chief, for example, if they were given that power as their recourse or if they were given more substantial power as their recourse, um, it would become problematic because they are simply they are only an appointed body if perhaps and sorry I'm sort of processing mm -hmm. through this mm -hmm. and looking at all the options while discussing and identifying sort of the problems with some of these alternative options um, that may present themselves um, but I do agree that there need to be some teeth for the Citizen Review Board, but I can understand how it is fundamentally problematic to provide those teeth because this group is going to have to be appointed by the mayor. So we have one person choosing, the theoretically, and we know we trust you and appreciate and respect you, um, but theoretically we have one person appointing that entire commission, and so at that point in time it becomes because they're not elected, it becomes a unique risk to give them more teeth. And I'm not sure what the solution to that is. May I? May sure, I, thanks, Mr. From an old historian, right? Uh, so in our community, we have 14 with this, I think it would be 15 boards and commissions. And over the years, in some cases, uh, uh, one or two, uh, those have been statutory, such as the Planning and Zoning Commission, that's a statutory requirement. Uh, but for the most part, uh, councils have come up against tough issues, and they decided maybe initially to appoint a task force or blue ribbon panel, and they liked the work, and they decided, we, we want to keep you on, and we're going to appoint, create an advisory body, because in this subject area, whether it's the environment or whatever it is, we feel that we, we could use some, some uh, ongoing guidance and, and support. But what the council can't do is to give away its authority, its elected authority, uh, under local ordinances and under state law. Uh, by referendum, I suppose you could say, we, we would rather, in these matters, uh, issue our authority and let uh, uh, a, a group of local residents uh, make the decision. I, I think that is not what you want to do. It's not what I would ever support because I really believe in representative democracy. I think it's, it's incumbent upon you to retain that authority or else we have a system unlike anything we've seen in this community. And so. On that score, I have, I think the advice, also, I, I, I think practically speaking, the, the, this is all public information. It would be public uh, actions of this body that would uh, gain immense attention, I can assure you. Uh, the city manager is, is hired and fired by the, by the uh, council. Uh, if you don't like uh, the decisions of the Police chief, you can tell me something and I can, I can decide to do something about it or not, mm -hmm. but you can't fire the police chief. Only I can do that under your system. So you can get rid of your system. Mm -hmm. There is lots of recourse. It's not instantaneous, it's not overnight, but I really think you have, and with social media coverage of everything that we do, uh, I think uh, there's, there would be no hiding a bad decision. In the, in the eyes of most of the people in our community. So as a practical matter and as a philosophical matter, I think you should support this. Alderman Perkins. 
So, so to summarize and, and said a little differently, ultimately the teeth are right here, right here, on, right on, on the council, and this this commission or this group is no different than any other group where they're assembling information, bringing recommendations to the council, and the council are the teeth exactly. with it. And to, to go any further than that, but it would essentially be ceding some of our responsibility to another right. entity. Now, to me, I think that's something that could be an eventuality, but I, don't, I think that's quite a, a large first step, you know? So I, I like the thought of it. I, I think it's a great voice, it's a great starting point. I'm not saying it's a, it's a destination, I think it's a journey. Mm -hmm. Alderman Larson? And anybody jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. To me, the start of why we had this is to get clarity of what might have happened in a certain situation. Because whenever something happens, there's like three truths. How one person sees it, how the other person sees it, and the truth of what happens maybe falls in the middle. And by having a five-person commission, as they look at it, they can try to come up with the best picture of what happened, why it happened, what caused it to happen, so that when people who have the teeth, whether it's the police chief or council, we have the clearest, hopefully unbiased picture of what happened. And I think that's when you look at some of the horrible things that have happened in our country over the years, to find that unbiased you know, no slant, no anything. What happened is very hard, and by having this commission. So I'm thinking if that's our purpose, then what we're, what we're working on now seems to fit the bill, because we have what's the next step after we find out what happened between the chief and the council. Yes, Alderman McAdams. So the other aldermen have uh, touched on it, so I don't need to repeat it, um, that the public, uh, the public nature of this um, commission would, would be the teeth. It would be the reason, would be the way that we hold people accountable. And I, I just wanted to point out from a constitutional standpoint that the Sixth Amendment to the Constitution uh, does provide that anyone accused of a crime uh, gets the right to know who their accusers are and the nature of the accusations. So I don't think um, we have a right under the Constitution to protect someone making an accusation anonymously. I don't know that that would hold up to court scrutiny. Alderman Ber To Alderman Perkins's point, we are the accountable body overseeing all of this. So uh, my interest is, yes, all of the, the facts and whatnot will be public information, but what will be that reporting mechanism to city council? In other words, uh, updates, uh, pertinent information, yes, we will all be able to read it, but what should be those things that are reported to the accountable party so that, uh, again, we, we as a body can uh, properly think through and research and uh, do the, the due diligence that we are elected to do. Alderman Favor. Since our, our meeting in August, I had received several emails, and um, I think it was already mentioned at the public safety meeting last week. You know, this was brought up. It was it was mentioned how through discussion and through collaboration, you know, the changes that have been made have been very acceptable. From what I haven't had any uh, additional complaints or anything based on what was published. Um, as has been has been said, my understanding of the, the the review board was, you know, to to look at a situation similar to one that happened here in Dekel maybe two years ago, to review the footage, to review the incident, and to to see what what is the what is the police department procedure, was that police department procedure followed in this traffic stop. What was uh, was the officer within, you know, the, the the policy of the department? If he was all the way through that procedure, should 
we change our procedure? Is there a requirement that maybe we need to change the, the department procedures? And, and this is the forum to have that discussion. So I never thought this was gonna be a, uh, you know, a, an, a, an ability to, to fire people or to, you know, it's to me, this is where we get better. The citizens get to review the, you know, the procedures, they get to review the situation, they understand what's happening, they make recommendations, and we get better through that, their recommendations. Any other comment? Oh, Alderman Smith. I guess I'll go last. Um, I have two, you know, I've had discussions with the city attorney of my protection of our, the victims in this case, you know, in certain areas, and I truly support that, but we, it's a fine line, as Alderman McAdams said about the Sixth Amendment. We also have to remember we have court proceedings that may be going on simultaneously. And to, we could jeopardize, I guess is maybe the word I'm looking for, those proceedings by not proceeding very graciously and cautiously. Um, it has happened in other jurisdictions where a victim loses, flat loses. Um, and I don't think that's the intention here, but I think we should think above and beyond, we also have to protect the victim in these cases. Um, Chief would probably agree that they are, you know, they are probably the reason we're there. Um, I think there's enough teeth in here, there are enough, the public's going to see this over and over again. They're probably gonna see us before most of us that sit up here will see it. Um, you know, you also have court involvement. You're, you're going to have other outside bodies that have jurisdiction in this as well, whether it be the state's attorney's office and or the attorney general's office. Uh, there are also arms of both of those, the civil rights uh, for the attorney general's office, if everybody wasn't aware, that does have a team that does investigate these. And I think the chief is right. They probably investigate most shootings or review them at a paper level, if I'm correct. Um, I think the teeth is there, um, and I, I would really caution council giving away um, anything more. Now, the nice thing about this is this is a start. I think we can learn from this and move forward with it. So um, I like it the way it is. I've had a lot of positive comments on the way it was. I mean, we have a human relations commission that went dove into this quite deeply, and I think they, they worked, um, worked through this, and I think this is a place to start. So that's it. Thank Alder you. Woman Morris. I think I really appreciated uh, Alderman Perkins' note that this is a journey and this is a starting point. Um, I hope that we can, as we move forward with this, we can continuously look at how it can be improved. Um, and I really appreciate Alderman Smith's comments uh, regarding um, anonymity of uh, accusations and such. I think that's really important. I wanted to go back to that and ask more questions about it, but I think Alderman Smith covered um, my concerns about it from what our, uh, our speakers had said. So, so I, I appreciate your feedback and input on that because I think that that covers the concern there and sort of highlights that anonymity is a really important factor on both sides, so. Any other comments? Well, I did wanna thank City Manager Nicholas and Chief Bird. I know you guys have spent countless hours working on this and I've been a part of many of the conversations or been included in those with community members and I've seen the thing evolve from the first draft to what is being brought before us now. And I've seen community input definitely help change and help shape and sculpt uh, what's before us right now. So uh, thank you for your time, but also thanks for being open to ideas from our community and figuring out ways to bring those into this ordinance uh, that is before us tonight. Um, we were on a roll with second readings, and just in case anyone didn't hear, uh, we're gonna leave this one, so I, I will not be calling for uh, a waiving of second reading uh, after we do roll call here. So with that, roll call. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. 
Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight ayes, zero nays. All right, Resolu or ordinance passes on first reading. So moving to agenda item M, reports and communications. Council member reports. Want to kick us off, Alderwoman Morse? I have no report. <laughs> Alderwoman Larson? I just want to thank probably every department in the city to putting on a great corn fest again. Yeah. Um, after a year off, you hit the, hit the streets running again. It was great. Alderman Smith. I missed it today, but I understand we swore in a female firefighter today, our second one, am I correct, in history? So uh, congratulations to you guys, and a local person, I understand. So and someone down at the end. Favor. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Alderman Perkins. Um, happy to start to see some progress with the, the old city hall coming down today. I don't know if anyone's noticed that, but a couple of cranes out there, and some, some dust flying. Great to see. Mm -hmm. Alderman McAdams. No report. Alderman Verbeck. Many thanks to the residents and business owners that have reached out for topics at our next Ward 6 meeting. Mm. Uh, that meeting will uh, occur sometime soon this fall, but I would like to wait until Council's results of the proposed redistricting, and, and after that has been decided, at that point, we'll uh, send out an invite and press release to announce that next meeting. Awesome. All them in favor. Well, because it occurs, I believe, before our next meeting, the uh, come out for the uh, Corn Classic on the 26th and uh, the Taste of Decal uh, shortly after. And then uh, a couple of us mentioned the public safety meeting uh, that was held uh, up in Ward uh, 1. And one of, the, one of the comments that kept coming up was, um, I'm a student. Uh, I'm just a resident, um, you know, I don't have any formal training. What, what can I do, you know, to help with the crime? What can I do to help the community? What, what are some of the things that I can do? And um, Chief had mentioned one of, the, one of the best things you can do in, in any area of the city is take care of your community. Uh, grab a trash bag and literally once a week just pick up trash. If you live near a public park, uh, and usually after the weekends when you go through the public parks, they usually miss the garbage cans. I don't know how it happens, but most people miss the garbage cans. Just pick that up. Um, there's nothing you know, that says people don't care or respect their community than having trash just laying on the streets, um, with Annie Glidden being the kind of the welcoming to DeKalb. You know, we should always try to keep that clean. And I know NIU has been a huge partner with that in the past. You know, before the uh, students come back, they've, they've gone out and helped clean that up. But that's just a suggestion. What can you do? Get a little exercise, grab a trash bag, pick up some trash. Thanks. Awesome. Um, I just had a, a few things that I'll get through as quick as possible. First, um, Alderwoman Larson, after the last uh, council meeting, um, asked for a meeting with uh, City Manager Nicholas and myself about uh, video gambling in our community. And during that meeting, we discussed uh, asking City Manager Nicholas to come before council with a revision to our ordinance that, you know, all the video gambling uh, establishments and um, units that we have, okay, they're in place. But actually putting a moratorium on uh, additional video gambling machines uh, for the future. So we've had some requests from various entities that want to add video gambling to their establishments and this would be, if implemented, something that we would just restrict that going forward. Did I capture that okay? Absolutely. So I don't know where City Council stands on this necessarily. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Alderman Berber. Thanks for bringing it up. I look forward to that discussion. I think that also uh, terminal fees uh, that we charge annually should also be revisited if we look at some of our neighbors. Uh, certainly the cost of uh, gaming for proprietors is higher in those areas. Uh, what should be those rates? What are the responsible rates? Excellent. So if it's all right with council, we'll have City Manager Nicholas spend just a little time on that and bring that for a consideration potentially at some point in the future here. All right. Um, I was at the 9-11 ceremony at Northern Illinois University on 9-10. Uh, it was a great ceremony. Uh, I 
just seeing all the soldiers out there and all the students out there, and they had, must have been about 3,000 flags planted in the ground. Um, it took me uh, off guard. I was more emotional than I thought I would be. Um, so I just wanted to thank Northern Illinois University for uh, putting that event on, and I think the Daily Chronicle for a lot of your coverage on the events of 9-11 uh, were fantastic. Um, I also met with the Naperville mayor uh, just uh, this last week. It was very informative. Um, smart man, uh, had a lot of ideas and some insight onto us. And the only reason I'm sharing this is um, just letting you know kind of what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis since I can't get together with you guys outside of these meetings. Um, the parties on Blackhawk, I don't know if all of us are aware of those, but they're, they're large. Um, three, four, five hundred people are showing up these to the campus cinema property that we have. Um, Alderman uh, Favor mentioned about litter. Uh, I got to give huge kudos, and I'm going to invite them to a council meeting at some point so we can recognize them, but the trash squirrels that are coming out there and picking up literally hundreds of pounds of garbage every single weekend, trying to keep that area as clean as possible. So that's been really cool. And I got to commend the, the DeKalb Police Department and IU Police Department, trying to keep an eye on those to make sure they've been uneventful uh, overall <laughs> from a policing perspective. Um, and it's nice that they uh, just supervise those. Um, I would encourage all council members, you should, all should be assigned a commission. Um, uh, so any, if you're not sure which commission you're assigned to, holler at me. I'll have Ruth uh, produce that list again. Um, but I just encourage everyone to uh, show up to some of those commission meetings. Uh, some of you do. I'm not saying we don't. Uh, but just further, just uh, encouraging all of us to show up because they are informative, and I think it's great. The more we know, the stronger we can be as a body. Um, AGN meeting, which was last Wednesday. I think Alderman Favor was there. Alderman Morris was there. Um, that was a that was a phenomenal meeting, and I think it's another step towards you know building more relationships and more bridges in the Annie Glidden North community. Oh, Alderman Marson was there. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, Thank you, and uh, um, it was just wonderful seeing so many people come out voicing their opinions on what's going on. And again, uh, the more informed we can get on people that are living in that neighborhood directly means the more informed decisions that we'll make in the roles that we have. Um, was at the swearing in of the uh, a firefighter favor, uh, so it was cool to see yeah, a local woman. Um, correct, it is our second one, uh, our only female firefighter right now, right? Yes, exactly. Um, so that was just fun to do, uh, and always recommend if you all hear about those, uh, come on out because they're just a, a wonderful uh, event to participate in. And last, I will agree, uh, Cornfest was a huge hit. I talked to a lot of the downtown, especially the restaurants, they were crushed with business, which I say that in a positive way. Um, City Manager Nicholas, the idea of moving everything to the middle of the street, if that was your idea, whoever's idea years ago. A Andy Rye has Andy the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I bet. Old Andy. Yeah, that was a phenomenal, phenomenal decision, and the, the downtown businesses are benefiting from that directly, as well as Cornfest just is such a nicer festival, I think, visually, um, because of that. Um, and that is all I have. City Manager Nicholas, your report. Thank you. This is going to be very brief. It's all good. That's what he said. Uh, as you know, last uh, fall and in and, and December, just before the the holiday break, um, we wrestled with a new city uh, and uh, firefighter contract, uh, and our aim was to create staffing to raise the minimum staffing from 13 to 16 uh, firefighter paramedics over the course of four years, and we we struggled with how we were going to help pay for that, particularly in the in the early going, and uh, we were still just sort of in the bottom or coming out of the bottom of the COVID uh, pandemic impacts economically. Uh, we were able to get that done. I think it was a, a very sound and solid agreement. And uh, uh, coincidentally, uh, going back really probably two rounds, so I would say maybe the late 2019, we had applied for a SAFER grant. And SAFER is an acronym that stands for Staffing for Adequate Fire and Emergency Response. It's a federal grant. They're not easy to come by. Uh, some, t some communities that apply for them may get uh, a one-year grant that covers not only the base salaries but also the, the benefit package. Uh, uh, sometimes you get two years. Sometimes you get three years. Uh, uh, the the uh, 
The three-year awards are very few and far between. Uh, the most recent round only created four in the whole country. And the city of DeKalb is one of those four. 2.7 million plus over the next three years to help fund uh, our firefighter uh, staffing plan to get from 13 to 16. Obviously, it'd be a lot of paperwork there, but it's an extraordinary accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't say I took, <coughs> take any credit for it. Uh, I, I wanna say thank you. There's some people in the room tonight I want uh, to take a bow. Obviously, uh, the, the fire administration was, was involved and Fire Chief McMaster and uh, Deputy Chief Mark Gilmore, who are both in the audience tonight. Stand up, please. Nice job. Thank you. An equal role uh, and, and, and many times uh, a late night role that uh, surpassed any uh, was afforded by uh, members of our International Association of Firefighters, Local 1236, and in our audience tonight is President Lieutenant Noah Millard. Would you please stand up? Uh, we just received uh, today, I think, Jeff, the, the information regarding the, the uh, way the, the, re the funds will be received and what we have to do is gonna be uh, a very rigorous, strenuous reporting process as it should be from FEMA, but uh, we are excited. This allows us to do some cost shifting, frankly, uh, because of the decisions you've made in recent months, uh, we'll be able to do some other things, and um, I'm excited to bring you options in, in the near future on that. But for now, I think we can um, take satisfaction uh, for a, a, a job very well done and thank you all for what you've done. That's my report. Excellent. Just continued good news. Um, moving on to agenda item N, executive session. We have none, which leads us to agenda item O, adjournment. I would take a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Second. It was moved by Alderman Smith, seconded by Alderman Favor. Roll call. Morris. Yes. Larson. Yes. Smith. Yes. Perkins. Yes. McAdams. Yes. Verbeck. Yes. Favor. Yes. Mayor Barnes. Yes. Eight eyes, zero nays. We are adjourned.